Hi, in this video I'm going to show how to draw a flowing canopy line using four cardinal points, north, south, east and west. In a typical topographical survey, as supplied by the client, the tree canopies are very indicative. They're not accurate and they seem to be using the same blocks scaled up just to give an indication of tree size. But you can't trust these canopies and very few trees are perfectly circular like this. So we need to draw our own. And to do that we would use a spline with the fit points. So I'm going to click that and then you would click your north dimension and then you'll say your east, south, west and then close. And you end up with a reasonably looking uh, canopy line. The problem with this is measuring each dimension from the tree centre. And to do that we could use the grid. If I click it on. And we'd have to centre the grid on the tree. So UCS centre snap. Right click. And I'll just erase that one we've just done. So now if I was to draw my spline say four meters north oops nearly forgot before we do that let's check the grid settings they're set to half a meter so let's set them to a meter then go back and if we're going four meters north click on the grid lock uh, three meters east uh, five meters south, one, two, three, four, five, and four meters west. And then you right click close to send it back to the start. But to do that for every tree, resetting the UCS, replotting your lines manually for what could be a hundred. 150 trees is going to take a while so a quicker way would be much nicer <laughs> and for that we're going to create a dynamic block which will do the job for us all we would then have to do is enter the data into the properties and it'll draw it so before we start that we're going to create a layer A new layer. I'm going to call it Arb Canopy. Give it a nice green colour and I'm going to give it some line weight. And I'm going to make it current. Okay, so it's now set as a current layer. I'm going to delete that and I'm going to redraw just a circular one, uh, say five meters. So it's one, two, three, four, five, 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 and then right click close. And up here I'm going to create a block and call it Arb Canopy. And the pick point will be the center of the tree. And insertion will be meters. I'm allowing it to be exploded. I want it to be openable in the block editor. And select the objects. I'm going to select that spline we just made. Right click and then I'm going to click OK. And we go into the block editor. And we've still got our grid on. And 
and that's our spline. Now it's pretty important to have your properties on the right hand side or visible all the time. Um, if you don't know how to do that, if I just close that and go to view properties, it, yours will probably end up like this. So you just grab it, move it until it sort of locks into the right edge and it stays there. It's important for this demo that you, you have your properties visible and I like mine there out of the way you can make it smaller you can hide it bring it back so I'll just hit the escape button to cancel that and we're going to ha start by adding a, a linear parameter from the center we we'll start with north up to the top and I've got my grid on and I've got grid lock on so it's locking nicely to these one two three four five points and then you it's asking you for the position of the parameter so just click there and then click on it and I'm going to give it a name north and the number of grips I only want one grip the grips are these blue arrows and those are the things you're going to grab and adjust it with. So I'm just going to have one at the top there. And we're going to keep this as we're not going to have any override on the distance adjustment. That's great. Hit the escape button again. But that's just a parameter. It's pretty static. It doesn't do anything unless you add an action to it. And we're going to add the stretch action to that. And once you click one of these actions, you need to just read what's coming up in the command line. It's saying select the parameter, which is the north one. I'm just going to turn the lock off for now. And now it's asking me which parameter point, point to use. And you can see a red cross there well I want the red cross at the top because that's the bit I'm going to be pulling so you click that and then it wants a bit of a stretch frame so you just you're going to make a square with your thing you just click click and hold your mouse down drag it and then release and click again and then it wants you to select the object which is the spline and then hit the enter key so I've now made an adjustable parameter for north and if I go back to the block editor you can test the block there's a little thing up here click that and if you click the item you've got a blue arrow and I can pull him up or down but also in the properties you can enter the value so if it's four meters north I just enter four two eleven or whatever eleven there you go and fine-tune it if you wish so I'm going to close my test block and quickly now add all the other three so back to parameters linear switch the grid lock back on center to the side and just put the label there select call it east number of grip points one action stretch select the parameter turn that off because it's messing it up and then the red cross goes on this one stretch point object enter linear from the center down to the bottom south and one grip point action 
the stretch, select the parameter, red cross, stretch frame and the object. And then the last one West and action stretch and the stretch frame and the object and enter. So let's test that. So if I now click it, I've got north, east, south, west. East 12, South 3, West 4, North 6. And you can see the problem now we have with using a spline. Because it has to maintain a nice curve going through your four points, it does occasionally have to overlap. To maintain that curve it, it can't curve down here go through that and keep a nice curve to meet this point it has to it has to flip out slightly and that's why we're keeping these as adjustable so you can just fine-tune it if you wish although to be honest I would only do this on extreme shapes like this in most cases where you've got a fairly uniform they all behave it's only when you get really strange shapes which which does happen of course then you get things flipping out so you would adjust them so close test bot block and um, Close the block editor, save the changes, and this is something that you need to watch out for. It, it's converted my original spline into a block, but look at the size of it, it's absolutely huge. And the reason for that, if you type in units, insertion scale is on inches. This has come from this topo and I needed to set that to meters or unitless. So if I now delete that block, and sorry about the road noise outside, and insert recent blocks, arb canopy, it's now scaled to the right size and it's just a simple case of putting your data in and what you do is when you've done one tree copy selection Turn him off now, and you'd move it onto your next tree. And then adjust as necessary to whatever the data is for the next tree. Or you could do them all at once and then go around and adjust them. But personally, I would probably do them in batches. you'd put whatever your data is I'm just putting random data in here and probably have the um, center snap on for this to save time so I want to copy him copy center snap go to your next tree center snap 
and adjust your data. And if you need to retune it, you can. But remember, you'd have to reset your UCS to each tree. So your grid is, and then you use this. So you don't only really need to fine tune for difficult shapes. You can see it's overlapping that. I personally wouldn't worry about that, but you could just bring it back. So it just touches the line there. If you wanted to, it's just being picky. And if we go to home, you would then, when you finished, turn off all the original trees so you're just left with yours. And if you show the line weight. And that's it really. And if you want to put the UCS back to its original, you just type UCS and world. And it's gone back to where it started, which is down here somewhere. If you need to go back and modify your block, just click on one of them, right click, block editor, and anything, any changes you make, let's just make a change for the hell of it, there you go, it hasn't really changed anything. When you close, it will say save the changes or discard, and if you save them, the block will be updated, which is handy. For instance, if you wanted to change the colour of this, it's done by layer. Let's say we just override it for the hell of it. And I now close and save the changes. All my blocks that I've made have had their colour changed. So it's very useful. It doesn't mean you have to go through every single one. And um, mess about a bit. And that's it. Thank you very much.